Hey folks, I'm Karel from Data Doosers and today I want to show you how to do forecasts and what if analysis in QuickSight. This is part of the ML features, machine learning features of QuickSight, which are good. Sometimes they can be very useful. And there's also, at least today, a very few documentation about it. So what we're going to do is analyze the deaths due to COVID and we're going to forecast how those uh, deaths are going to trend until the end of this year and we are going to incorporate an alternate scenario for that forecast given a certain variation on the number of deaths by the end of the year. So I'm going to create a new sheet. I'm going to add a line chart. I'm going to put the dates in my axis and the dates. And I have my chart. So I have the full trend of the deaths since 2020 until mid-June. So now I want to forecast this trend until the end of this year. So I need to add six months to my data. And this is actually very simple to do. And you have two ways to use forecasting in QuickSight. You can actually add a card with natural language, which is auto-generated from QuickSight, or you can create it from scratch if you need to, or you can add a visual forecast here in your piece. So if you look here in the insights, by the way, you're only going to have access to this if you have the Enterprise Edition of QuickSight. If you don't, then you are not going to see this. If you open your insights card and you have a visual selected, QuickSight is going to suggest a lot of insights on the data that is represented here and it's going to show you um, I don't know the highest days the period over period changes all the kind of details and you can use this and add to your visual and configure and adapt it to what you want to see and also you have uh, ML power insights such as these two this one is going to show you anomalies and this one is going to show you a forecast so you can add this one and you're going to have sort of like a natural language uh, forecast that you can also use. But I want to focus on visual forecasting. And for that, it's as simple as clicking on the three dots in your visual and add a forecast. When you do that, you're going to see automatically that your forecast was created by default with 14 periods forward, but we need to add six months, right? So we need to add... 180, 195 days to get up to the end of the year, right? So let's apply that. And now this forecast is going to come all the way here to December 25. So we let's add actually um, 201 days to get to the end of the year. And there we have it. Great. So now let's reduce this a little bit to see it better. So what is this light orange um, cone that we have? Well, this is the prediction interval, which is the confidence interval that you, that you have in your forecast. The biggest this number, the wider is going to be this cone, right? So just for the sake of this demonstration, I want to take it all the way down to 50%. And I'm going to apply it just to see a smaller uh, probabilities there. And what this means is that your forecast is going to be represented by this orange line, but this forecast is telling you the upper bound is 39K in this case and minus 2000. So the confidence for this forecast is between this range right here being the orange line, the value that they are forecasting. And this is something that you can play with depending on the data that you have. Now, there's also something really cool here which is the seasonality. You can read here the description, but your data may have seasonality. And this one, I know it does, because in the way COVID cases, deaths, and data overall is reported, you have the weekends in the middle, and sometimes not all the hospitals or the agencies reporting the cases uh, report over the weekends, and then that's why you see these gaps and spikes. So I'm going to say that my seasonality is going to be seven. Uh, of seven days because I have my data here represented by days. So if I set a seasonality of seven, I'm telling QuickSight to interpret this seasonality like seven days 
which is a week, right? So I'm going to apply this now. And you're going to see how that line, which was a flat line, almost flat, now incorporates all that seasonality that you can see the similarity that it has with, with the actual data, right? Great. So that is the forecast. That is what QuickSight and the algorithms that they have in the backend think that is going to happen with the debts by January 1st, 2022. So today, or June 14, we have 11K debts, and they expect, by analyzing the trend, that we're going to be on 17K by early next year. And that's okay. That's just math. That's just number behind that. There's nothing else. It's just an analysis of the trend, of a numeric trend. But in real life, we know that this is not or hopefully this is not the scenario that is going to happen. Why? Well, because vaccinations are ramping up across the whole world, and you can expect that as more people get vaccinated, less people are going to get infected, and therefore the deaths are also going to trend down. And now is when what-if analysis come into play. Let's think that by the end of this year, we expect to have 50% of the population that is not vaccinated today, we expect to be vaccinated by then. So we are going to have 50% of people that are hopefully not going to die that are included in this forecast. So how can we see that possible scenario here? So it's very simple. If we step on the forecast line and we right click, we're going to get the option of what if analysis. So let's click on that. And this is what we're going to be able to set. If you notice, now in the date, QuickSight is going to show the date that we selected on the forecast. And in the target, it is going to show you the value that they expect to have on that particular date. So in our scenario, because of vaccination, we expect to have 50% less deaths. So if our forecast is giving us 17K, of deaths by then, and the half of that is going to be something like, I don't know, around 8.5K, right? Something like that. So when we click apply, what we're going to tell QuakeSight is, hey, adjust the forecast, the out of the box forecast that you're doing, this one right here, but now use this number for January 1st. So assume that in January 1st, instead of having what you expect, 17K, we're going to have 8.5K. So let's see how it looks. Let's click apply. And now an alternate forecast is going to be created there. So let's go there and let's analyze it too. So this one, the one on top, the, the lighter one is going to show you the, the initial forecast, but after we added the what-if analysis and we told QuickSight to expect 8.5K on that particular day, then QuickSight is going to adjust the forecast that it did to match that number on that day. And this, this trend, this forecast, this what-if analysis is something that may be closer to reality if vaccinations continues trending up as they are and it can be better, it can be worse, I don't know, it depends on a lot of things. This data is maybe not the best example to demonstrate this, but this is how it's going to work. You can also, instead of choosing one date, you can uh, choose a time range. So if you expect, I don't know, in the next three months to have 80% less, because you know that the vaccinations are going to be super good in some countries, then you can do it as well, and that is going to work in the same way. And that is how it works. As you can see, it's very simple to set up. The only thing that you cannot do with this what if forecast is um, add this to a dashboard. So this is only going to work if you have an analysis. So if you need to share this with other users, then you are going to share your analysis. You're not going to be able to publish this as a dashboard and still be able to work with the what if analysis. I don't know why, but that's how it is. As you can see, this is something that may be very, very good if you have a data that doesn't change a lot or you can have a clear picture of the changes that you're going to have. So if you 
are a company that you are selling a product or a series of products and you have a steady revenue out of those products but you are going to add a new product or a new version or something like that in certain period and you want to see how those sales those new sales that you're going to get are going to impact your revenue then this is something that you, you or any business user can very very easily create and kind of play with the data and see how the future is going to look based on on, on the past on and the data that you know uh, that can change so i hope this was helpful if you like our content please uh, subscribe like our videos and if you have any comments if you have any suggestions any new content that you want us to create just uh, let us know and we're glad to create new stuff for you guys thank you so much um, see you around